Hello everybody, this is a Tuesday top room meeting, which should have been on Tuesday, but unfortunately we were encountering some electricity issues, so this is a recording which will be available to you guys on Monday, and I hope you enjoy. This is a bit more about what are we going to do and talk here, but basically it is about uh, Hyper-V with Star, star Wind, a Virtual Sun, Two Nodes, Hyper-Converge. It's me, I'm Oles Boris, I'm a Solutions Engineer at Starwind, Inco Starwind Software Incorporated, and I really enjoy this company, and I have fun working here. And I hope you will have fun watching this video as well. This is a bit more about what are we going to talk about here today. So uh, we will go through a step-by-step -step configuration of Starwind Virtual Sun with Hyper-V. Because, uh, and why did we choose this topic? Because many people were saying that our guidance is not detailed enough there are some outdated things and I hope after this meeting no one will ever encounter any issues with configuring Starwind and that that is basically it and as for the uh, failure test we will uh, simulate uh, different types of failure like electricity failure which we have experienced ourselves and a basic clean shutdown and we'll see how it works and right now I'm going to pull up one of our Hyper-V hosts and we will start with the configuration of it here it is this is our Starwind management console we have some things pre-configured here but no worries about it we're going to create a brand new Starwind device to explain everything and so that nobody has any questions left and we start with right clicking on this server we go add device let's give it a name let's give it a name taproom and we will create it uh, one gigabyte size on purpose uh, to show you some kind of a synchronization trick so it is this easy. We created a device in a couple of seconds and now we're going to replicate it by right clicking on it, choosing replication manager and saying add replica. We choose synchronous two-way replication. We type in the AP address. I have it over here. We create a new partner device since we do not have existing one. Uh, you can change the name of it here, but I'm, f I mean, this name is fine to me. And over here, we choose the synchronization and the iSCSI channels. We are using these channels for synchronization and this one for iSCSI. So we also recommend setting Harby channel onto the iSCSI channel. And yeah, so this is why we're doing it this way. Then we go next and say create replica. Here we have our replication created. It is initializing the synchronization process. It will take basically a couple of seconds since it's only one gigabyte device. Okay, there it is. The synchronization is finished. And as a trick, that I wanted to tell you is how to avoid a long synchronization for a huge devices that you want to create. You basically create a one gigabyte device and then you replicate it. After that is done you right click and then say extend size of HA device and then you choose for how much do you want to extend it. Let's say 49 and extend. After this is done, this device is 50 gigabyte size and this one is 50 gigabyte size and no synchronization process at all. 
after this is done, after we have our future cluster shared volume configured, we have to launch iSCSI initiator. We have it opened here already. And then the first thing to do is to go into discovery and uh, discover the loopback IP address, which is uh, 127.001, and this IP address for the iSCSI. After this is done, you go into targets, you refresh this list, and then you see all your targets which you have created in Starwind. We created a taproom device. Since we are on 134 hosts, this uh, target over here is a partner connection for us, uh, and we have to connect it through a iSCSI AP address. The local AP address of 134 host is uh, this one over here, 1020. And on the second host is 1010. You select those AP addresses, you say OK and OK. This device got connected. And then over here, this device is a local for us and it also says local in the target name, so that is pretty easy. Then you press connect, you enable multipath, you select the local ad adapter to Microsoft iSCSI initiator and when while doing a local connection, you keep the initiator IP as default and the target IP should be set to a local IP address. You press OK, OK, and this device is connected as well. That, that is all it in the iSCSI initiator. I don't think that people, I, I don't think that is too hard, so I hope you guys will handle it in future. Then you open the disk management where our new freshly connected drive should appear and it appears usually at the bottom and here it is. You bring your device online then you have to initialize it. We will initialize it as a GBT partition since this is the way Starwind recommends doing it. We're doing the initialization and then we're creating a new simple volume. You can quickly go to, through this wizard, assign any letter to a drive and call it whichever way you want. I prefer calling it this way and then you finish. After this is done on this side, we have to make sure that the same process was done on the second side as well. So I will quickly bring up the second screen. Here it is. And uh, launch the disk management over here. This is our second Hyper-V host and nothing is seen there. And you know why? Because we didn't do iSCSI connection here. We go into iSCSI initiator on this side as well, go into discovery, type in those IP addresses. The one should be the local and the second one should be your iSCSI link. Go into targets and you press refresh after the discovery IP addresses are typed in and now we are on 202 server so this connection is local to us then we press connect enable multipath go into advanced select a local adapter and as I said before we leave as default the initiator IP and we set a loopback IP address for the tar target portal IP we say OK and then we go on to our partner node. Our partner node, uh, our partner device should be connected through a iSCSI AP address, uh, which is 1010 for this node and 1010 for partner node. We press OK, OK again, and it's done. Now we go back to our 
disk management. Not sure why. Oh, there it is. Oh, we actually don't need a refresh. We just bring this device online and we see that it is already initialized since it's a copy of it. It was initialized on one side and it is it is initialized on the second second side as well. After our Siren device is configured, we will have to go into the failover cluster manager. We go into the failover cluster manager and create a cluster. Since the cluster creation is a very, very, very straightforward procedure, we won't be reviewing this one. After you've created a drive, you go into disk section after the cluster is created and the drive is created. You go into disk section, you press add disk, and over here we see our configured storage with 50 gigabyte capacity. We press OK, and then we have it over here as a available storage. To make it a CSV, we have to press the button which says add to cluster shared volume, and we will to do so. Afterwards, to make the, I mean, to make the great test, we would actually want to configure a virtual machine which lies inside this volume, but that takes a while, especially the installation of the OS. So I would really appreciate if you don't mind that we will do all the testings on this machine, which lies on are another cluster shared volume which was configured before this SAP room. Uh, we will connect to this machine to see what's going on inside it. We see that it's alive and and to see how the live migration process is working I'm going to ping myself. So I will go into CMD and ping the loopback IP address with the parameter T so it never stops. It's pinging and while it is pinging, uh, pinging I will do a live migration and see how will it, what will go, what, what will be with this virtual machine. Whoop. And Live migration is finished. Let's do it once again. There you go. The live migration is is finished again. Right now I will ask my colleague to go and reboot this node, the one that is on this virtual machine. And he went into our server room and we will see the hard power outage on that host right now. Oh, I mean, not actually right now, in a maybe 20 seconds. I'm not sure how fast he runs. There you go. This host failed and we will launch another host and open the failover cluster and we see that virtual machine is now running on the second host. Well, it is running, but it is running after a reboot since this was a hard reset. It was uh, a quick migration. There are two migrations in the 
uh, failover manager, I mean in the failover cluster, one of them is the live migration, which uh, migrates your virtual machine without a reboot, and another one is a quick migration, which acquires when you have a hard failure, and this causes a reboot on your virtual machine, but then it fires up itself and continues running and working. After it boots up, yeah, it is booted, we will be able to connect to it and work with it. Yeah, there it is. It's running. So basically this was a overview of our configuration, how do you set things up and how everything works eventually. And I understand that you didn't have a chance to ask me any questions. So over here on the bottom of the slide, you can see my email address. And uh, if you would type in the, uh, the uh, missed taproom message before asking any questions, I would gladly provide you with any answers to your any questions and help you with the same scenario configurations. I am sorry again for that uh, failure we have experienced and I hope this, this will never repeat and I wish every one of you luck and I hope that you enjoyed this tap room and this overview. Please do not hesitate sending me any questions. Just remember that you have to uh, that you have to type in missed tap room before asking any question, and I will provide you with answers. I wish you luck. Thank you for watching this video, and bye bye.